What's up guys and welcome back to the Concrete Edge right here on Deco Creek TV. Oh, thank you guys. Uh, so my name is Jeff and on today's show we're going to be going over a few tips on dealing with high moisture in concrete floors. Now this can be a big problem if it's not addressed properly before applying a floor coating so stay tuned and you're going to learn all about it. So concrete floor coatings are really at an all time high in popularity right now. Uh, but one of the biggest challenges is dealing with moisture content in the slab. I mean, with all the great innovations and in products over the last 10 to 15 years, I mean, one thing still remains the same concrete floor coatings don't get along with moisture. Now, I'm not really gonna get uh, too in depth on the why that is in this video, but we do have an episode uh, discussing the differences between concrete sealers and coatings, and we go more in depth on the topic. But if I was gonna sum it all up in one statement, excessive moisture will cause failure in concrete coatings. I mean, it's pretty much a guarantee. So step one is always gonna be testing the moisture, and the best way we found to do that is with one of these moisture meters here from Tremex. So most interior concrete floors, they like to hang right in that three to 5% moisture range. And I mean, every now and then you might uh, find one uh, that's under that and that is completely fine. It's the ones that you find that are over 5%. Those are the ones you need to be concerned about. Uh, but what we're about to get into, I mean, it doesn't happen very much, but when it does, you do need to know how to handle this. Because like I said uh, a little bit ago, I mean, if you coat over that floor and the moisture is too high, there is bound to be a problem down the road. And so honestly, I mean, one of the best things you can do is start asking some questions. And, you know, generally when you're doing this moisture test, this should be in the estimate phase of the project. Uh, so that way, you know, if, if for some reason uh, this isn't going to work to coat this floor, at least we know it right up front. And, you know, you haven't done any work that you're not going to get paid for. And so one of the first things that, that you should ask is how old is the concrete floor? And, you know, it, this can happen where the floor is just, it's too new uh, and the moisture just hasn't left it from its original pour. And, you know, the old industry standard is going to be 30 days and you know in most cases 30 days is just fine by the time we hit that point that moisture is down where it needs to be but i have seen times where uh, after 30 days it still wasn't ready yet so another situation that can happen is if that floor has been recently saturated with water and you know a, a common scenario would be that you show up to a customer's house uh, for the estimate, you do some testing on the floor just to make sure it's going to work and your meter is just pegging off the chart. So assuming this floor, you know, is uh, old enough to coat, the, the next question you should ask is how long has it been since you had water on this floor? You know, don't just give up right away. If you set this meter down and it's not reading right, I mean, don't just walk away and say, sorry, your floor can't be coated. Again, ask questions, figure out when was the last time that they had water on this floor. And something that can really, really help this problem, again, if this is the situation that, you know, uh, they're either it was been recently saturated or sometimes just really high humidity and there's a lot of access to like exterior doors and there's just too much moisture in that slab. And so if we just close everything up and we get some big commercial dehumidifiers in there, that will help the problem. Again, in this situation, we just need time, but uh, dehumidifiers can really, really speed that time up. Now, the other thing that can happen is just going to be poor drainage. And again, in this case, the floor is plenty old enough. It hasn't even been recently saturated, but there's there's just a we got high moisture. This generally uh, isn't over the whole floor. This is generally only where the problem areas are at. If that drainage is busted or there's something wrong there, uh, you will get areas, you know, four, five, maybe six feet in from the walls that those moisture or that that moisture is just going to be too high. And, you know, the rest of the floor is fine, but I can promise you there will be problems on that area that had the excessive moisture. And in this case, I mean, we really got to fix the problem first. Again, there's usually a reason for this. Concrete does not like to be uh, over 5%. Now, one last thing before we move on with this would be basement floors. And, you know, this can depend, you know, what part of the country you're in, what your climate's like. But, you know, here in Ohio, um, you know, older houses before it was, it was code to put a vapor barrier underneath basement floors, depending if it's in a low lying area, it's like you can go in and you can test that floor in August and everything is absolutely great. But when you're there in April, it might not have been the case because if there's no moisture barrier under that floor, and there's a lot of water up against the foundations that this can happen anytime you're below grade. So try to get a little picture of what this is like in April. And if they say that the floor gets really dark in April and then it lightens up throughout the summer, that is a big, big red flag. And I would really, really, uh, you know, highly recommend either maybe doing something different or at least a disclaimer with that customer that, you know, you have no control. There's nothing you can really do about that. 
So to me, those are the best ways of handling this situation is that, you know, figure out the problem, fix the problem, and then we can move forward without any additional uh, products involved. But there are times where you just can't get to the problem. It just can't be fixed. In that case, I mean, there is a solution and that would be uh, some sort of a moisture shield uh, primer. And in the, in the case uh, from DecoCrete, it is just called moisture shield primer. And this is a product that is more tolerant to moisture than any other for the floor coatings you normally use for all your um, final look. And the biggest thing is that this can only do so much. I really like to look at this is this is for questionable floors, not necessarily high moisture floors. And another thing about moisture shield primer is thickness does matter. Uh, just make sure you do do your whole homework, uh, read the data sheets. Now, honestly, for me, when it comes to those floors that are really high moisture, you can't fix the problem. There's nothing you're gonna be able to do about it is maybe we switch to a different system altogether. In this case, uh, something that's gonna be breathable, like a concrete stain or an overlay, uh, followed by a concrete sealer. So just to recap the main points uh, before we finish up, always 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 test moisture before applying that coating and most floors are going to be in that three to five percent moisture range and although this doesn't happen very often if it does test higher than five don't quote that floor right now start asking some questions so you can diagnose the problem and hopefully fix it now again it works best if you do this during the estimate phase of the project and that way if the project has to go a different direction uh, no one is going to be left feeling cheated well guys that's pretty much it for this week's show thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video man we really really do appreciate all the support that you guys show to the channel every week and don't forget about the decorative concrete Hec expo happens every single march all you gotta do is click the link in the description right below and all the information is there thanks for watching and we'll see you next time